What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my betting breakdown video for UFC Macau. We have Piotr Jan going against Davison Figueredo. And yeah, a card that is going to be starting late Friday night for me. Fights are kicking off at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, my plan is to actually watch the first four fights and then go to bed during these uh, road to UFC fights and then wake up and catch the rest of the fights later. So I'm going to be up till like 5 o'clock in the morning. That's the plan. Not sure if it's going to happen, but yeah, this is a card where, listen, I had a massive week last week for UFC 309. This week, I want to exercise some, some bankroll management, some good old-fashioned bankroll management. This card is very weird. Um, a ton of new fighters. Uh, of course, we got the road to UFC fights, so it's a fight I'm going to tread very lightly on, but I did find some spots. Going to be taking a shot on a couple big plus-money spots. And uh, we'll see what happens. So my <laughs> the hope is to wake up Saturday morning and, um, and and hopefully everything goes well. So, yeah, before we get into it and break it all down, if you guys could like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys are liking down in the, the comment section. There's going to be no best bet video because these fights are kicking off at like 3 o'clock in the morning. And yeah, so we have this week, week off, and then UFC 310, and then UFC Tampa Bay. So looking to finish the year strong. Had a good week last week and looking to hopefully continue that for UFC Macau. All right, going to go quickly on some of these, because some of these fights I just, I just want absolutely nothing to do with. But this first fight of the night, we have Mashate going against Nicholas Mota. And I'm glad they put this fight as the first fight of the car, because that gives me motivation to actually stay up and, and catch this first fight, because I think it's one of the better fights on the entire card, actually. So I'm looking into this fight. This is a fight where, honestly, I've been kind of going back and forth on all week in terms of a pick. First, I was on the Moda side. Then I was on the Mahashate side. I think it's a close fight regardless. I think the line is certainly wide here on Mahashate. But I'm looking into this fight, and I'm like, okay, I think the fight ends by knockout. is very interesting. And it's like minus 175, not the best price. And then I'm, I'm thinking to myself, geez, if I like the fight ends by knockout at minus 175, why not take a shot on these big, giant Moda knockout props here? Because I think either guy's live to get a knockout. And you take a look at Mahashate, his inside-the-distance props are absolute trash. I mean, the inside-the-distance minus 120, the KO only plus 145. But with Moda, you have a guy that his knockout props are, are massive numbers, plus 375 for the knockout. So what I did was I took a small shot on the, the Moda KO in rounds one or rounds two at plus 500 for a half a unit. I think if he is getting the knockout, it's going to be early. Uh, also, like I said, don't mind the fight ends by KO. It's not something I'm running to the window for. The fight doesn't go to the decision is minus 250, uh, which I also don't love. But I do expect violence here. But yeah, I'm taking a shot on these big, giant uh, Moda, Moda knockout props to kick off the night and see what happens. I think he's just as live to, to land a big shot as Mahashate, and we're getting some pretty juicy odds for it. Next, we got Long Zhao going against Kwong Lee. Nothing sticking out here. I think it's a close fight. Honestly, the line's probably even too wide. It's it's going to probably go to a split decision. I lean ever so slightly Long Zhao. That's the pick, um, but I'm not laying minus 135 on the dude. Lonnie Kavanaugh going against Jose Ochoa. Oh, yeah, I mean, this is, should be a fun fight. I think it has potential to even be fight of the night. Um, but in terms of betting on this fight, there's nothing really sticking out. Kavanaugh minus 365. I think he's getting a little bit overhyped, a little bit overrated. Um, after his contender series fight where he did get a first round knockout, I think Ochoa is actually a very decent fighter. He's not some pushover, some bum. I think this fight is going to look a lot more competitive than the line does indicate, but I think it's Kavanaugh getting it done, but nothing really sticking out from a betting perspective. Maybe the over, but it would be a, a sweat because these guys are going to stand and bang. Both guys have a ton of power, so it's going to be a fight where I'm going to sit back and, and watch this one and enjoy this one. Next, we got Carlos Hernandez going against Nyman Jargal, two minute in a barrel. We got Hernandez minus 185, two minute in a barrel, plus 160. I like violence in this fight quite a bit for a couple reasons. Like, if two men into barrel is getting this done, he's getting it done, in my opinion, by by early knockout. But I also feel like this is the spot where Hernandez can get his first official UFC finish. As we remember, he did finish Denise Bondar in the third round, but ended up going to a, a technical decision. Um, I think the finish is very live on the table for both guys, but Hernandez here especially, because I'm watching two minute to barrel, and, and don't get me wrong, this guy's exciting, he's fun to watch, he's dangerous, but he has one of the worst ground games I've ever seen in my entire life. If you go watch his first road to UFC fight, he's getting taken down so easily by another striker. Um, the dude took him down like six times, looked like a fish out of water off his back. I don't think he has great cardio. Hernandez, I think, is like a brown belt or a black belt. Hernandez has been fighting 
you look through his career, he's been fighting legit grapplers. Tatsura Tayara, Ray Saruya, even like Berez is a black belt. Altamirano is a black belt. So Hernandez, like this is, uh, Nascimento. Nascimento is another black belt. So this guy's been fighting nothing but um, absolutely great fighters, um, especially in terms of those those ground games. And now he's getting two minute to barrel, where I think can kind of be had on the mat here. So I like the fight, doesn't go to decision. I have one unit on it at plus 108. And then I also like the Hernandez 2-3 sprinkles, a quarter unit on, on each, quarter unit on the round two at plus 1,000, and then quarter unit on the round three at plus 1,600. I think early on it's going to be a, a big sweat. I think both guys will have their moments, but as this fight goes on, I think two minute barrel is going to slow down. Hernandez is going to get easy takedowns. He's going to easily get in the mount. He's either easily going to take the back, and at that point, I think he's going to submit or TKO a tired two minute barrel. So, um, yeah, liking the late props for Hernandez and the fight doesn't go in general. Next, we got uh, Shao Kahn Fong going against Xi Ming. All three Euro to UFC fights, I'm not, I'm not touching. Um, especially this first one. I think uh, Shao Kahn Fong wins this fight, wins it by decision. The decision props minus 185. Absolutely not. Pass. Dong Hoon Choi going against Kira Sahota. I like Sahota. I liked him at plus money, though. The plus money has completely dried up. He's now minus 130. It's a pass. I wish I would have looked into this one earlier. I kind of pushed the road to UFC fights um, last on my agenda for the week because um, I just <laughs> was dreading it so bad. But if I if I would have saw Sahota there at plus 110, plus 120, would have pulled the trigger. By the time I taped it, it was a pick him, and now he's like minus 130. So it's a it's a pass for me, but Sahota's the pick. And then Su Young Yu going against Balgan Jalisali. Uh, I like Yu here, but... Yeah, I just don't want to bet on these fights, man. I, I think you, I think this fight could also be close. Um, you should be able to get takedowns. You should be able to get on top here. The control's not the best. Um, what I don't mind is, like, I guess the the U, they have the double chance. Uh, I think it's the decision or submission at minus 105. I don't mind that to get a better price tag. But at the end of the day, I do think it's going to be a close competitive fight. I think it could be like a split decision where U does get takedowns, but uh, Jalisley is able to do the better work on the feet, more volume, more active on the feet. I think it's going to be a scramble fest. But yeah, I think U as a favorite makes some sense here, but I'm not running to the window for it. Next, we got Zhang Mingyang going against Ozzy Diaz. Yeah, nothing here, surprisingly. Um, Man, I was actually going to take a shot on these Ozzy Diaz like finish props because like... <laughs> They're massive numbers. The KOs, plus 525. Round two and round three are astronomical numbers. Zhang Mingyang's not won a fight that's went out of the first round. But Ozzy Diaz, I don't know. I just, he's showing up. Doesn't look to be in the best of shape. I kind of have a feeling they're kind of they're bringing Ozzy Diaz in here to to get Zhang Mingyang a highlight reel knockout. But geez, I can't lay minus three hundred on Zhang Mingyang. Like at the end of the day, this guy's been finished five times. This guy got knocked out by Askar Marzarov, one of the biggest frauds, if not the biggest fraud in UFC history, and that was only like four years, four or five years ago. So um, Zhang KO one's the pick, but these Zhang props are just disgusting. Like KOs minus one thirty. And so the distance minus is 200. The round one is is trash as well. But I think it's round one KO for Zhang Mingyong. Thought about the Diaz like sprinkles, but I'm not even doing that, to be honest. I think the under one and a half is a solid parlay piece. I am going to monitor the over under um, one and a half in this fight. Because it looks like money is coming in on the over. If I can get a better price on the under one and a half, I might take a shot. But yeah, nothing is really sticking out for this fight. Should be a pretty easy Zhang Mingyong KO one. Next, we got Carlos Olberg going against Volkan Uzdemir. Yeah, kind of have a, have a hot take in this one. So as you guys know, I'm the Finnish guy. I love Finnish props. Um, I actually bet my first over in a while last week for the Jones-Stipe fight that hit. Um, this is another week where I like an over here. But more specifically, I like that, that Olberg by decision. Um, plus 310, have a half a unit on it. I think Volkan is durable, first and foremost. The only time anybody's ever knocked this guy out on the feet was Yuri Prohoshka. No shame in that whatsoever. And I also think that Olberg, although he's starching hose, he's starching some of the worst competition you'll ever see in your entire life. At the end of the day, like, Olberg went, took Fabio Chiron to a 15-minute decision. So, yeah, he's knocking out Ihor Pateria. He's knocking out Nikolai Negamarianu. Like, this is a, a massive step of competition for Carlos Olberg. So, with that said, though, I think he's the much better striker here. I think he's quicker. He's younger. He's going to have more volume, more power as well. Um, I like him to win, but I, I think Volkan Uzdemir is, is tough enough to survive the, first, the, the, the the full 15 minutes here. So give me Olberg, half a unit, by decision, plus 310. If Olberg knocks him out, it is what it is, but um, got to show me. It's a, kind of a show-me spot in that, in that 
in the sense that I, I don't think that Olberg's going to go out there and knock him out just because he's knocking out some bums. So give me Olberg by decision. Next, we got Wong Kong going against Gabriela Fernandez. Big, giant, massive pass. Kong is minus 800. A lean decision, but could be a knockout. She does have power. Um, minus 800 is way too wide, but she should get the win. Muslim Salikov, Song Kanan. Oh, this one's frustrating because a lot of people are on Song Kanan. I'm actually shocked to see how many people are on Song Kanan this week. But this line's not budging at all. Um, I was expecting the line to improve throughout the week. It's kind of just stayed at minus 175 all week. And at that point, I'm just fine with, with passing. If you can give me a little bit better of a price, maybe I'd bet it. But even then, it's like Salikov, he's 40. He has terrible cardio. He has terrible volume. But I, I just find it hard to believe that Song Kanan's going to go out there and knock out Muslim Salikov when he couldn't knock out the corpse of Ricky Glenn in his last fight. So I, I think Salikov wins... Just, I don't know, I just don't want to bet on this fight. Kind of a disgusting fight, and, and honestly, one of the worst fights on the card. Like, this fight's going to be terrible. If you guys are up watching this fight and not asleep yet, this fight might put you to sleep, because Muslim Salikov fight, just not a ton go on. But yeah, Salikov's the pick. I just can't stomach it. Like, if I laid minus 175 on Muslim Salikov and he lost the fight, I don't know what I would do with myself. So it's, it's a pass. Next, we got Yan Jaunan going against Tabitha Ricci. Yeah, so originally, I was going to stay away here, but the more I kind of thought of it, the more I thought that... Yeah, Reach is a very live dog in this matchup. Absolutely is. Um, so I have a, a half unit bet on Tabitha Ricci to win this fight by decision at plus 270. And it's either going to, in my opinion, look like a very, very good bet or a very bad bet. Because I think it's all going to come down to whether or not Ricci is able to get takedowns. If Ricci is able to get takedowns here, I think she could win this fight like easily. I've always thought that Yan Jaunan has a major hole in her game. If she gets taken down, Ricci probably stays there the rest of the round. Of course, on the feet, you have to favor Yan Jaunan. But if Ricci can get a couple takedowns here, like Mackenzie Dern was able to get a couple takedowns against Yan Jaunan. Um, you know, if reaching it like a takedown or two, like she can win this fight, like even on the feet, you have to favor Jan, but it's not going to be like one way traffic. Like Ricci has some solid striking and proven striking, good volume. I think Ricci can win a little bit of minutes in the clinch as well. So yeah, there's some paths here for Ricci. Uh, at the end of the day though, I think it's a close fight. I think Ricci's a live dog. I think she can win this fight by decision. Went with the decision instead of the money lines. I don't think Ricci's tapping out Jan. Um, Jan showed great submission defense against Zhang Wei Li whenever she, well, she got choked out, but she was able to survive. And then she also showed great submission defense against Mackenzie Dern. So I think if, if Ricci's winning, it's by decision. Probably a split, but yeah, half a unit on the decision prop for me. And then we got Peter Jan going against Davison Figueredo. I like Jan here quite a bit. Um, don't love the line. I was hoping to get a much better line, but the way I'm playing it is I like the Yan to win by rounds four, five, or decision. I have 1.25 units on it at minus 125. I think it's a great way to play Yan, get the money line down, because I do think that, you know, Pierre Yan is going to start slow, like always, going to kind of build into the fight. Uh, Figueredo is going to have his best rounds in the first, second, and third round, but as the fight goes on, I think Pierre Yan is going to start taking over more and more, start putting it on Figueredo, and honestly, probably even getting out, getting Figueredo out there, like Figgy's 36 years old, he's taken a lot of damage, he's been in a ton of wars, he's been finished in the past, like Brandon Moreno finished this guy twice, so I think a, a Piotr Jan late finish, 3-4-5, they're very much in play, Piotr Jan has power, Figueredo has not felt this bantamweight power yet, he's fought Rob Font, who doesn't have any power, Cody Garbrandt has power, but Figgy took him down and, and subbed him, um, Marlon Vera has some power, I guess. But yeah, Piotr Jan has legit power at this weight class. He has five-round cardio. He has great volume. So yeah, I like Jan here quite a bit. And I like that 4-5 decision. And then I also sprinkled the 3-4-5 the, the for Piotr Jan. Quarter unit on each. Round 3 plus 1,300. Round 4 plus 1,500. And then round 5 plus 1,800 for Piotr Jan. Uh, looking for a, a round 3-4-5 finish or a decision. But hopefully a late finish here for Piotr Jan is in play. Um, yeah, that's all I got for this week. Going to do a quick recap. I have uh, Nicholas Moda to win by first or second round knockout, half a unit plus 500. Also, don't hate the fight ends by KO, but didn't end up and didn't end up playing that. I have Tabitha Ricci by decision, half a unit plus 270. Carlos Olberg by decision, half a unit plus 310. Uh, the two minute barrel, Carlos Hernandez fight doesn't go the distance, one unit plus 108. Hernandez round two, quarter unit plus 1,000. Hernandez round three, quarter unit plus 1,600. And then the Piotr Jan rounds four, five, or decision, minus 125, 1.25 units. And then a quarter unit on round three, four, and five, round three plus 1,300, round four plus 1,500, 
and then round five plus 1800 best of luck everybody for ufc macau keeping it light honestly i feel like i have too much action on this car but hoping to hit some uh some spots here and, and move on to ufc 310 so you guys best of luck we'll talk to you soon enjoy the fights see you